Welcome Pillybo's teachers. I am making this video for you today so that you can experience what a flipped classroom feels like. In this video, I will discuss the background theory and concepts of flipped classroom. I will then give you some homework to complete before the PD session on Friday. When we meet in class on Friday, Angela and I will begin with review of the video, followed by a more in-depth practical application that we both already have in place in our classrooms. To begin with, I want to go over this idea of what a flipped classroom means. Uh, you will notice here that I am recording what's on my screen, on my computer, and you will see me in the corner on a webcam. These are options that I will go over with you on Friday as to ways that you can make videos and use them in a classroom. To begin with, let's learn a little bit more about what it means to have a flipped classroom. I found this infographic from Newton Infographics, and it gives a lot of detailed information on what it looks like, how it feels, as well as the history of what it comes from. Uh, so the idea, first of all, is that a flipped classroom inverts a traditional teaching method and delivers instruction online outside of class and moving homework into the classroom. This is a great concept, especially when it comes to the idea of a math class and a science class and problems and manipulations that the students need to do and have problems with because they're frustrated and unable to complete this at home on their own. So the inversion is this idea that we take a traditional classroom where the teacher is in charge and they are lecturing and then at night they give homework that is reading and questions that are due the next day and we flip it around and instead during the day during class the students complete an activity and then at night they watch the lecture that is done online the next day in class they would then do another activity that is based on the previous night's lecture so the idea here is that the students can watch the videos at their own pace at home this means that, yes, the videos might be 5 to 10, 15 minutes long, but a student can pause where they want to, and a student can take notes how they want to, and they can go at their own pace in that way. So it allows that connection to happen and that pace to change because not all students can keep up with how a teacher lectures in the classroom. The other aspect it has is that it, it's this idea of concept engagement and it allows the students to have more one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor. Now the theoretical framework is this idea that you have two key concepts taking place. You have the classroom flip. So the first use is this idea of you're use, using educational technology. This is a lot of what Angela and I are going to go over with you on Friday with this idea of what types of technology you can use in the educational realm to be able to flip your classroom. Then you're going to provide an opportunity for students to learn through activity. So at night they'll use the educational technology, during the day they can use this learning through activity, and both of these together influence this idea of the learning environment. Student, the realm of students have greatly changed in the last decade, let alone the last two years. So I've actually been flipping for two years and this is greatly influenced and changed learning environment within my classroom. Um, as this idea of a, the innovation and where it came from, um, it started in 2007 where two teachers in Colorado discovered some software that where they could actually record PowerPoint presentations. And this is part of the software that I'm going to show you and introduce you to on Friday. The recorded their own videos, they posted them on, on lecture, they posted them online so that students would have the opportunity that if they were sick and missed class that they could watch videos at home. The videos started to go viral and they started to spread like crazy to other teachers and then these two guys were asked to speak to teachers around the country about their methods and thus we became this idea of having a collaborative work environment that helps teachers and students to master skills through this flipped classroom model. The idea here of where this comes from and the idea of why we've greatly increased over the years this idea of a flipped classroom model comes from this concept that the poor learning outcomes. So if you look at, I know this, these statistics don't necessarily apply to Pilipos, because, but they do apply to what's going on in our nation as a whole with relation to education. So 69% of grad, only 69% in our country 
currently graduate from when they start high school to when they end high school. Thankfully at Pili Bills, ours is a lot different in numbers, but that idea is we need to know how to reach everybody. We've learned a lot through differentiation over the past couple of years that we have this traditional one-size-fits-all model that is not working for our students. We have to go to their different learning environment, different learning methods, and we have to get them to be more involved and take responsibility for their learning environment, as well as us needing to be more interactive with them. Now, going along with this dropout rate, an average of 7,200 students drop out every every school day, which means about 1.3 million people a year. So keeping this concept in mind by taking away this one-size-fits-all model, we're able to actually gather in the different learning styles that students can be more engaged and feel more comfortable in their educational environment and learn more. Beyond the idea of the one-size-fits-all model, we have this prevalence of online video. In just the last 10 years, we've seen this concept greatly increase. So it started 10 years ago, and then there were 15% of internet users who were taking online educational videos. Now in 2010, just three years later, it's up to 30%, and now it's up even higher than that. One website that allows for a great growth on that is Khan Academy, which Angela is going to talk about on Friday, that has that idea of offering videos in a wide variety of subjects and how to handle it. Now the idea of what it looks like. So teacher, so looking at this model here, so this um, high school in Clintondale, um, this Clintondale High School in Detroit, decided to try this concept and this is what they did so each teacher created three videos a week the students then watched the videos and the videos are short it's not like you have to lecture online for the full 45 or 50 minutes that you would normally lecture in class because the students aren't raising their hand because they're not being interactive they're not asking questions there aren't disruptions you just do your lecture you get everything out, you get everything in there, and then, and it's going to be really short and concise. And remember this idea of chunking material. You don't want to do too much at once. Now, the students can watch the video at home, or they can watch it in class, depending on which model you are using. And then class time is then spent doing labs or interactive activities to illustrate the various concepts. Students online receive instant feedback. Uh, Angela and I are going to show you how to set up those ideas of how to get the instant feedback. We get rid of the students feeling frustrated because they can't do the problems at home. We then, teachers can then one-on-one -on -one as they're milling about the classroom, can revisit different concepts with students that they have questions about, and then teachers can also support the students in the class. If the students have questions, the teacher can answer them, they're right there, they can do problems on the board, they can answer questions. Everything is right there. Now the results. Before flipping, 50% uh, of freshmen failed English and 44% of freshmen failed math. And there were 736 discipline cases in one semester. After these teachers started to flip, they noticed this huge dramatic change. And this is that high school um, that I just previously mentioned here in Detroit, Michigan. So 19% of freshmen failed English and 13% of math of freshmen failed math. This, these numbers and these great decreases is because of that interactivity. Discipline problems went down as well because the students were engaged and they were going at that pace. Okay, now looking at this concept and flipping back to my PowerPoints. So we have this idea here um, that who's flipping a classroom. So we have in a survey that was done by the Flipped Learning Network, we have teachers that took the survey of those that were actually engaged in flipping and were considering flipping and how it works within their classroom. Now the main idea is that 85% of teachers that teach for seven or more years decided to try flipping. At the end of their first year of flipping, 91% of them decided they wanted to flip again. 
and they'd been using the model for less than two years. Now I am one of those. I've been teaching now for 13 years. I started flipping at year 12. I am definitely among the 91%. I am now, last year I started with one class. This year I'm up to two classes. Next year I will probably be with all of my classes. So keeping that in mind and how you do this can drastically influence your classroom. And I do it with AP classes. You see, so you can do it with any level at any um, age range that you would like. Now the subjects most frequently flipped are science, math, and ELA or English language arts. Noticing that there's a huge drop from math to ELA but it still is there and it still has that potential. Now 95% of the people who responded to the survey are secondary school teachers. So they teach high school 9 through 12 and 50% of them come from suburban schools or, or, and the, where the other 50 come from urban and rural. We are more the urban and more the suburban aspect, and we have a lot of potential with the idea of the secondary schools. So now that you've watched this video, I'm gonna give you some homework. I want you to go check out two websites. We have edpuzzle.com, which is the one that I use, and we have khanacademy.org, which is the one that Angela uses. You need to go to the different websites, and so this is the first one is Edpuzzle and you need to make an account. These are free accounts and you need to make teacher accounts and Angela and I are going to show you what to do with them on Friday. So if you look at the Edpuzzle, go to the area where it says teacher start now and it does tell you this idea of it's free. Look around, take a stroll around, look at some of the videos, look at some of the classroom aspects and get a feel for what it's like because on Friday we're going to go back to this. We're going to go deeper on this and we're going to show you more. With Khan Academy, the same thing. Go to the teacher start here aspect so that you can get that feel, that in-depth. Scroll down and look at the different types of videos that they offer, the different types that are here and noticing that idea of what you can do within your classroom. And if there's not something you already like here, you can make it like I do. So there's no difference between the concepts. You can use the variety that you want to and you can flip in your own manner. Hopefully this works for you and Angela and I will see you in class on Friday and I hope you did your homework. Thank you.